flying a very well-known fly today. This is called the Hornbird. And believe it or not, this fly was named after the fortress at Helm's Deep in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. It's the Hornbird. Actually, I'm kidding. Just want to see who's awake. This is named after Frank Hornberg, who was a game warden in the 1920s, over 100 years ago in Wisconsin, and he came up with this pattern. It can be fished as a dry fly or a wet fly if you want. Talk in the video a little bit about the different hackles that you can use, whether you want to fish it as a dry or a wet fly. But it's been around for a long time and it's a very, very popular pattern. Pretty quick and easy to put together. There's different ways that you can do this. A lot of modern tires swap out some of the materials for other things. But if you keep with the color schemes and everything, it works very, very well. So that's the Hornbird. I'll get started tying. start the Hornberg with my hook on the vise. This is a 3906B. It's a must-add hook. This is a size 6. I'm going to go ahead and debarb the hook. You could use a shorter shank like a 3906 or even a little bit longer like a streamer hook like a 9671 if you want. I'm going to attach my thread. For thread I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black. The body is just a simple tinsel body. I want to go ahead and lay down a base layer of thread. And then I'm going to come back up and then tie in my tinsel. Now I'm not all the way up behind the eye of the hook because we have to leave maybe about a third, a quarter of the shank right here for a hackle in the end. For the body, I'm using a Danville size 12 Mylar silver and gold tinsel. I'm going to tie this with the silver side up here because I'm going to put in a double layer of tinsel. Put a drop of head cement along those thread wraps. That's going to help fix the tinsel body to the thread a little bit better and it's going to help it last a little bit longer. original pattern is laid down. The body was a silver tinsel like this. I have seen some people tie this instead of this. They use like a, a pearl sparkle braid or something like that. So, and you could certainly use some holographic tinsel or something like that if you want to give that a try. The next material is some yellow hackle tips. Um, I have a whiting American rooster saddle here, yellow. I'm just selecting two of the smaller feathers. I'm going to place these together so that they flatten out and I'm going to even those tips up. I actually have three of them there. There you go. I'm going to even those tips up.
then I'm going to cut away the excess here. I don't need a lot of that because I want to tie this in and I only need this to actually be about a shank length long. So I'm going to peel away the extra barbs that I don't need. Probably better to err on having these a little bit longer inside the wing than shorter. That said, I have seen some people who tie this with calf's tail instead of tackle fibers, or I should say tackle tips. But all the ones that I've ever seen were all tied with the hackles. I'm going to secure those in. I'm going to smooth this area off just a little bit. And those should extend just maybe about a quarter, half a shank length beyond the bend there. Now we're going to tie in the wings on this. Now the wings aren't a typical wing that would sit up on top of the hook. They actually are flat on the sides. We're going to use some mallard flank for that. You want to select some mallard flanks that are broader. Some of them that you get out of the package are kind of squished up and narrow. You don't really want those. You want these to be fairly broad, but we are going to take away. I want the tips to go just a little bit beyond the yellow, and then I need to take away the rest of these barbs right here because this is where I'm going to tie that in. So just hold that up and measure it. I have found that sometimes the mallard flank, even though it is kind of has a round of shape to it, I don't know if the barbs get kind of squished up or what it is, but when you tie these in for the hornbird, they tend to kind of get narrower. I'm going to take another barb or another uh, mallard flank feather here and do the same thing. I'm going to hold that up there and measure it. Take a little bit off here. Hold it up and measure it again. Take a little bit more off. You want to get these mallard flank feathers. See, I took that off and now that became too narrow. So I've got to find another feather here real quick. You could probably steam some of these to get them to fluff out a little bit more. At the same time, I think if you tie these in a little bit long, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world there. So now I'll tie that in on this side here. I want to match that up. I'm going to leave a little bit more on there and collect that together, as opposed to peeling those off so that it has um, a little bit broader shape to it. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. And I have some jungle cock to put in. I'm going to tie in the jungle cock so it just goes straight back along the center of the feathers there.
and I will trim away the excess. And now I'll smooth off this area for our hackle. The original hackle on this was a grizzly hackle. I'm using a uh, dry fly neck here. This is a Whiting's dry fly grizzly neck. You want the longest barbs to be about one to one and a half times the gap of the hook. I am, however, going to use two because these are shorter little ankles here. You can tie these in the same time if you want or separate. I'm going to tie them both in at the same time. What I've done is I've trimmed away the fluff on those feathers. And I have the two stems right there exposed. I want to have an eighth of a, an inch, maybe a little bit more exposed there so that when I tie these in, I will have some of that exposed rachis that will be the first turn of those feathers. Bring my thread down to almost to the eye of the hook. I'm then going to wrap these in one at a time and I'm going to open, I'm going to wrap them in kind of open because the second one will go in between the first one. I have seen some people who will tie this with a grizzly hackle and a brown hackle. I would leave that up to you, but see, I'm going to tie this in a little bit open here between each wraps. I've got three, four, I get five right down to the thread. And then the second hackle will come along and fill in between all the wraps of the first hackle. And again, you get about five wraps there. I've also seen some people tie this even shaggier with, with much longer barbs on the hackle as well as using hen hackle instead of rooster so it's softer as i mentioned in the beginning this fly can be fished either as a dry fly or a wet fly so i imagine if you want a dry fly having stiffer hackles up front here that will help support it in the surface film would be more preferred, whereas if you're going to fish this as a wet fly, then having something soft like a hen up front might be the preferred hackle. Whip finish, trim away my thread, clean this up just a little bit, and a little bit of head cement. and our hornberg is finished. You know, it's like I said, sometimes the, the wings on these will come out not as, as rounded, and, and understand when this swims in the water, it will squish down like this. I just find that sometimes, depending on the mallard flank, they come out a little bit more triangular, but it still works, it still fishes very, very well. A little bit more head cement. I'll make certain I get some down into those hackles a little bit. And there you have it. There is the hornbird. Tolkien would be proud. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, 
please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Thank you.